I know that Calgary can act as a leader in what will no doubt be an important time in our nation's history. We still have some distance to go and every drop counts. The Allied troops, which included 14,000 Canadians, didn't give up when they were storming the beaches of Normandy. To clarify, indoors you can use your water as you regularly would, but outdoor water restrictions are still in place. Hi there, Mary Gondek. Sorry, do you mind if I just ask you a question? Do you, do you regret not being more proactive about this? No. Sydney Vizard for Rebel News here at Calgary City Hall. As you may know, the city's entire clean water supply has and continues to be crippled by a water main burst that occurred on June 5th this year, putting 1.7 million Albertans' lives and businesses at risk. We feel that life safety is imminently at risk. First, they said it would take a week to go back to normal, but three weeks of this crisis so far have revealed a second, even greater catastrophe on the horizon, which may plague the city for decades to come. To fix the system should we experience any problems, we need to do more. For now, continue to refrain from outdoor water use. As we turn on different pumps, we move more water through that pipe and we're just measuring how it's reacting and we'll continue to do that in the coming weeks. A supposed incident review by the city has yet to take place, but this new crisis is not just buried underground. It's in City Hall and could cost billions in taxpayer dollars. Mayor Gondek is now trying to cover up this shocking neglect of city infrastructure with her reactive budget changes to focus on utility rate hikes and enforcement of what could be permanent water restrictions. This serves as a staunch warning to every city in Canada. If immigration and climate activism are what your mayor's focused on, be prepared for your quality of life to go down rapidly. From immigrant housing to climate action, this is a shocking tale of how Canada's most unpopular mayor failed us in every department while increasing taxes and avoiding all accountability, and now causing real undeniable societal decay. We cannot afford to wait for her to leave this city in ruins. Act now at firegondek.com. Sign the petition calling for her resignation so we can find someone capable of maintaining our critical infrastructure before it's too late. For now, see for yourself just how dire the situation has become, and don't forget to sign the petition at firegondek.com. And for all of you, I will do my personal best to deliver this petition to her in person. The future of Alberta's largest city is in peril, and the real questions now are, how long will they restrict our water use? Who will pay most for this shameful governance failure? And how did we get here in the first place? This should have been dealt with in case an accident did happen or any breakage did come about. There should be a backup plan right away instead of like being running around with their heads chopped off like chickens. We spoke with Calgarians near construction to get their reaction to this prolonged disaster. We also sat down with Ward 13 Councillor Dan McLean at City Hall right behind me to provide an insider's perspective on the situation. This is unacceptable that the main feeder line for water for the entire city of Calgary feeding, you know, and out, our outlying neighboring cities as well goes down and it hasn't been inspected for 10 years. And how this caught us all by surprise is kind of unacceptable. So how bad is it? To me, that's very bad. Before we get to today's update, for more context on the situation, I strongly encourage you to check out part one of this story where I detail the feeder main burst, impact on remaining infrastructure, and the effects this has on Calgarians. You can find that at firegondek.com. In 2020, the city documented their framework for Calgary's water security future and came up with three supposedly key factors. First, there's climate change and the effect this has on water demand. Second, water licensing limits implemented through monitoring and controlled water use. Third, there's population growth, impacting the volume of water we collectively need to consume through the system. This wheel of death was from the previous administration, but is exactly what the current mayor has distracted herself with during this water infrastructure crisis. And by every account, it has failed us spectacularly. On the climate aspect, as soon as Mayor Gondek was elected in 2021, her first priority was to declare a climate emergency. It's the notice of motion, declaration of a climate emergency, and call to action. In our desire to be expeditious to get it added onto the agenda today, it came with my name. This was not directed at any particular weather events, no. 
that might make sense. Instead, this was just her placating to the globalist 2050 agenda narrative with taxpayer resources and globalist talking points. It stated that Calgary, quote, will become part of the global community, make climate change a strategic priority, develop strategic business plans and budgets in all departments, and advocate for funding from all orders of government. In her own 2022 Climate Action Strategies report, the city only mentions water treatment operations in regards to climate risks. They say water quality will supposedly decrease because of climate change, while boasting of a new solar panel addition at the Bears Paw water treatment plant that was cut off from the city because of unexpected infrastructure collapse. With all the mayor's concerns for Calgarians having too much water or not having any, she put zero consideration into preserving any of this valuable resource. We're here today outside Calgary's Emergency Operations Centre, where the mayor continues to answer questions from the media. Is this uh, volume of unused water uh, being held upstream at any point uh, to save it for, let's say, a drought or for farming purposes? So is that a possibility? There, from an upstream perspective, the city of Calgary obviously pulls from the rivers, both the Bull and the Elba rivers. As for upstream, that is not the city of Calgary's purview. And so what they are doing from a perspective upstream is not something I can comment on. Since the start of this water main break, we've saved nearly two billion, that's billion with a B, liters of water compared to our typical usage at this time of year. That's around two billion liters of what could have been treated drinking water now down the river that Calgarians and businesses have been starved of over the first two weeks of this crisis. All so we can maintain our new daily sustainable water use limit as dictated by the city. Two days after my question, the city started allowing residents to access non-potable water upstream to offset their losses, even if only in a minimal capacity. On Sunday, we are opening a station at both Baker Park and the Ogden Boat Launch for residents to access this non-potable water as well. Catastrophic failure could have been avoided, but at least we're on track with their 2030 water starving agenda which states that our city's infrastructure may be consistently unable to supply treated water to Calgarians in the future. And since um, we set the target to reduce water usage, we were, uh, we were trying to go for 2030, is that right? And we achieved that target much earlier? Yeah, so we achieved that goal 10 years in advance because of things like water metering, out, uh, changing our behaviors, uh, low fixture toilets that we incented folks to change in their older homes. These ambitions are deeply aligned with globalist initiatives on water restraining, like we see from the United Nations and World Economic Forum. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Water in the air, water in the soil, water in the groundwater, water in the rivers. There's so much water. And yet, a lot of this water is unusable. Back up to March this year, when the mayor warned of a drought which never happened, but was still used as justification to promote residential water use restrictions. Uh, the tool that we have available is uh, focused on outdoor uh, water reduction um, to, to be able to um, reduce our water demand for outdoor water activities. The mayor even flirted at this again during our ongoing infrastructure crisis. I think we've learned a few things about what we could do to be better water stewards, and I think that's really important. Sometimes it takes a crisis like this for us to reevaluate the practices that we have. When it comes to the outdoor watering schedule, that's a conversation for Council next week, and we'll see what uh, my colleagues have to say. This was postponed to next year, but what did come during our current crisis was regulated water restrictions. Immediately, we will be moving to stage four water restrictions, which will impact all outdoor water use in Calgary. This means no watering of any kind outdoors. Since the feeder main broke, the mayor has maintained these mandatory water restrictions on businesses and residents, which threaten $3,000 fines for non-compliance. But you can try to capture rainwater. The city also took to providing links to their snitch line so neighbors could call authorities on each other over water misuse, causing division within community members. Reminds me of what Nenshi did during COVID. Our officers have had 2,896 water misuse calls since June the 6th that have resulted in 904 verbal warnings and 18 violation tickets. I think people are just stressed out in general. People have all been pitching in. I mean, we haven't really come to the point of running out of water. And I think that reflects 
a lot of people doing little things to save water. I think people should be reaching out and helping each other, how they can support and help and people have needs. The focus should be on helping our neighbors, helping each other. Just the nature of people, the ones who are concerned and then the ones who don't give a we're dealing with it as best as we can. We're doing it to survive and water our plants and you know make sure that we're not using too much water. But a lot of people are getting sick of it. We have been doing this for three weeks, so it should be habits by now. But for businesses dependent on water consumption, notably such as car washing facilities, which have been shamed and required to halt operations by the city, no compensation is being considered. At this time, the city is not considering any financial compensation. Drink beer instead of water. And Mayor Jody Gondek has been begging Calgarians for the last few weeks to reduce personal hygienic measures en masse. If you don't have access to it, and if you don't have a plan to enable basic hygiene and sanitation, you can count the days before people get sick. Skip washing the car. Little dirt adds character. Much, if not all, of the mayor's framework for handling this situation has been entirely derived from her climate action agendas, even if she won't admit it. What overlay is there between the previously mentioned uh, drought water restrictions and limitation requests uh, and the current infrastructure water limitations and requests? So we have had water restrictions in place in the past when we have seen drought conditions. Uh, we have water restrictions in place now for a different reason. The water restrictions we have in place right now are based completely on the fact that we can't be using potable water for outdoor uses. Though on June 25th, in the 12 publicly available minutes of a nine-hour strategic meeting of council video session held in secret, Calgary's general manager of operational services, Doug Morgan, tells a different story. He says currently implemented water use restrictions in relation to the infrastructure crisis are largely part of the principles derived from our drought planning. We also used some principles we've developed in our, in our drought process in order to uh, use principles to prioritize uh, the water use. So what's next? The second phase of repairs has begun and continues to demand reduced water use and has opened the door on supposedly prolonged infrastructure issues. Things are uh, a little bit dynamic at this moment. Live like a local. Help us save water. The mayor has financed climate action to another level, leaving us in a prolonged state of crisis, which she says requires extended residential water use restrictions. Outdoor water restrictions are still in place. And the situation isn't going to get better over time, especially as the mayor continues to move forward with her costly desires to construct as many buildings as possible. Her sharing what she was most proud of in 2023. When council passed our housing strategy, and then when we passed the budget that actually has the funding in place to support that strategy. Instead of pacing the city's growth, Mayor Gondek has facilitated a drastic increase in international immigrants arriving to the city since her administration took office. Gondek has also gone against the will of Calgarians and around the province to acquire financing from Trudeau's federal government in Ottawa to promote mass densification plants. The money that's been announced today is above and beyond anything that we're doing. So it is recognition from the federal government that what we have in place, the plans that we have are solid. This is a major, major advance when it comes to housing policy in the city of Calgary. And I would dare say that it sets an example for the rest of the country to follow. We want to accelerate the pace of home construction to levels not seen since the end of the Second World War. Higher housing costs have resulted amid our already growing homelessness crisis and our very way of life is being forcibly altered to compensate for the increased population growth. We know that um, our behaviors need to sustain and continue and be different um, than what was maybe 10 years ago. Um, Calgary's growing, there's a lot more of us. These rezoning and densification plans are a truly large scale undertaking, and it is all being done atop questionable infrastructure that has not been properly maintained and is actively falling apart. It, it, it's disconcerting to, to see that you could have such a, such a major uh, lapse in the, in the infrastructure. I think it's worthwhile to get it checked out and reviewed and uh, possibly expanded so we're not in a situation that we are so dependent on one water main line. One of the big concerns that I raised was if we're going to add a whole bunch of density in the areas our older neighbor, our older established communities, 
with old pipes to begin with, how are they going to handle that much extra flushing or that much def- uh, uh, extra stress on that infrastructure? And was told that we are okay downtown. We've got a lot of older pipe down there. Some of it's even wooden adding a whole bunch more density right now, I think we better start looking at infrastructure and start putting our dollars towards that. For the last 10 years, we have not had an inspection. Uh, I wasn't here then, but you know, there was the people that were here should be held accountable. And of course that includes former Mayor Nenshi. We need immigration. We need immigration very badly. This has resulted in serious concerns as to the sustainability of our city's rapid growth and the impact Calgarians are now facing in regards to physical health, personal liberties, and future security. And the situation isn't going to get any better over time, especially as the mayor continues to move forward with her costly desires to construct as many buildings as possible in the area. Even though she doesn't know what level of growth our currently crumbling infrastructure can actually maintain. Now the city is also doing its part to make sure we can carry on with construction at this time because we have much needed homes that need to be built. This week we received permits from the province to pump water from the Bow River for construction purposes. This is peak building season and we want to make sure that as many houses as possible can be constructed. Does Calgary have the infrastructure to sustain your personal growth development plans uh, for the city and what level of growth can we actually sustain given we don't know the condition of our infrastructure? So speaking directly to the question of uh, having permission from the provincial government to use non-potable water to draw water for the river for construction purposes, this was something that we needed to do to keep the construction schedule on track. And the growth strategy that the City of Calgary has implemented that has been endorsed by City Council, (coughs) excuse me, recognizes that we have to have not only housing, but also the important infrastructure that goes with it. And we continue to make investments in that regard. Gondek has begun restricting residential water use for the purpose of sustaining treated water supply for locals. And only now is she realizing her mass development plans for greater immigration may completely hinder our ability to supply tap water to the greater area or worse, cause further mass infrastructure collapse due to the added pressure of a city growing out of control. This is a massive investment in housing from the mayor, especially considering her perspective that home ownership is a thing of the past. And so people have become much more liberated around what housing looks like and what the tenure of housing looks like. But as municipalities, we haven't kept pace with that change. We're still stuck in the 40s, 50s and 60s. It took several days before we actually looked out to the private sector or talk to the province and see if we can get their help. That was time that was wasted. I mean, our city employees are good people, but we, we have, we're a province full of this industry that builds pipe. We have Enbridge, we have Volker Stevin, we've got all these companies. And I talked to a lot of them in the early days and they told me they were not contacted. Mayor Gondek is so focused on housing that before providing non-potable water for Calgarians suffering through current residential water restrictions at their homes, as mentioned previously, no, she chose to first make sure more houses could continue to be built. She literally put immigrant housing ahead of Calgarians' livelihoods. And the mayor hasn't just been distracted. She's been actively ignoring the problem. Warning signs of imminent failure were becoming more prominent, yet they continue to change their stories on the condition of our infrastructure. One of our newer pieces of pipe, they say it's uh, 50 years old. Some of the communication coming out of City Hall is never quite consistent. We were told it was 50 years old with a 50 year life expectancy. Now we're told it's 50 years old with a 100 year life expectancy. As well, other issues are starting to pop up that weren't otherwise disclosed, such as a leaky system throughout the entire network. Developers have told me that uh, Calgary's water uh, uh, water leakage is is very high. They had a report that they gave to us in the spring, and we have to address the issues of why Calgary's water leakage rates in their pipe system is high and what can be done to fix that. The second thing that we have to ensure is that when they are moving to blanket rezoning, that some of these old pipes can handle the addition of apartment complexes. I mean, I asked the question just prior to the pipe um, uh, 
bursting. I, I, we had a, a joint meeting of council and my uh, Calgary caucus, and I said, are you sure with blanket rezoning that all your old infrastructure is going to be able to withstand it? And they said, well, you know, we've got low show, flow shower heads and low flow toilets, and so they expressed some confidence. I want to make sure everyone knows, though, that uh, water leakage across the system uh, is different than this water feeder main break uh, that we're experiencing right now. If the city continues down this path of mass infrastructure neglect, the results may well be catastrophic in their own regard. Leading to a perpetual state of critical infrastructure breaks and repairs that would plague the city for decades if these politically distracted mayors don't get their act together. These repairs are emergency in nature, and we know this pipe requires a medium and longer term rehabilitation plan. We've started the work to understand what that plan looks like, and we'll have more information available in the coming months. As for the rest of Canada, cities like Winnipeg brag of redundancies in place that prevent such catastrophes in the system. Other cities like Stewiak, Nova Scotia, took Calgary's situation to heart by reevaluating their ability to implement rapid development and population growth plans. Other places like Quebec City have taken the opposite approach and are now fining 35% of their population with thousands of dollars in water misuse fines after a large water main break in their city. According to the Economist Intelligence Unit, Calgary has also dropped from being the third most livable city in the world in 2022, Gondek's first full year as mayor, to being fifth place currently. The things we're doing around downtown revitalization, the conversion projects to build more homes downtown, the arts commons transformation process, all of this has been garnering headlines globally. This should serve as a warning to the rest of the province. If Alberta wants to import as many immigrants as possible and dictate the climate hysteria, be ready for your quality of life to go down in drastic ways. As a small note, the city has also not been transparent as to what's actually in the water, but that'll have to wait for another report. Remember, we still don't know how this feeder main broke, why we weren't able to prevent it, or who will be held accountable. Mayor Gondek did, however, put the city's top bureaucrat in charge of performing a supposed incident review, that being David Duckworth, who became Calgary's Utilities and Environmental Protection General Manager in 2018 and was appointed the chief administrative officer role by the former mayor, Nahid Nenshi, in 2019. How do Calgarians know this third-party investigation that you initialized uh, will be unbiased? What are, what are the assurances there? So I will turn this to GM Thompson in a moment, but what I would say is that I have asked our chief administrative officer, David Duckworth, to ensure that the review is independent that is done thoroughly and is comprised of experts. Duckworth previously detailed his ambitions to focus on the organization's culture, vision, and his relationship with city council. And defending city hall has been a trend of his. So whether this incident review provides some real answers and accountability for suffering Calgarians is in question, to say the least. Has the city uh, terminated any employment contracts in relation to this incident so far, or is this something we can expect to see as a result of the investigation? Thing that Calgarians have been doing throughout this water emergency is banding together and understanding how reducing their water usage is critical to get us through this time. Do you think someone should be held accountable? Yes, of course. You know, there should be a plan B, a plan C and a plan D if A, B, C don't work. When you look back to the 1970s, I think they should do some looking and seeing what, what, what happened at that time. Mm -hmm. How did the construction get approved? That sort of thing. But I think that the current city council does have an obligation to uh, to make sure that the infrastructure is is in good shape and that any necessary repairs are, are done. In short, they asked the city to investigate itself and were supposed to believe whatever they say. Calgarians have done their part to conserve water for over three weeks now, yet the mayor hasn't done her part to provide accountability or proper oversight. Instead of praising Calgarians for helping you ease this disaster, will you take any accountability for leading us into a crisis? At the moment, we are in a situation where we have had a feeder main break, and that impacted the entire city. There is an independent uh, incident review that is being planned. Accountability is absolutely the job of council, and we are doing the things we need to to look at what happened in this case and ensure it doesn't happen again. I believe that we are going to be part of that review because it's going to be important for us to understand the problems in Calgary and how it might uh, be a problem in other communities. I know there's a report. It's always sometimes uh, if it takes a tragedy or a travesty like this to get people's attention. So I know now there is a big review going on, so you can expect that kind of going forward. 
the problem is it should have been done in the past. Again, the previous administration really dropped the ball on this one. If a flimsy incident review, which will likely provide Calgarians zero accountability, wasn't bad enough, Mayor Gondek has now put forward changes to the city's budget to compensate for her neglect. But this time, she's targeting utility bills. What takeaways from this water main break made it to yesterday's uh, strategic meeting of council? Uh, and why was this meeting had behind closed doors as opposed to a more transparent approach? The uh, meeting yesterday was a strategic meeting of council and those are generally held as closed session items so we can have a fulsome discussion and robust debate on things that we are bringing forward to the public. In this particular case, we have made a commitment to get budget numbers out to the public sooner than we used to. This is another trick Mayor Gondek was trained to do from her predecessor, Mayor Nihid Nenshi, who developed an increased trend of having what should be public city council sessions held in confidentiality behind closed doors. One of the biggest takeaways from yesterday is the amendment that I brought forward indicating that we were seeking the water services team to come forward and let us know what kind of a budget they need over the next two operating years for maintenance, for upgrades, and for any technology or monitoring improvements that are required to their network. Unfortunately, even though Calgarian security and safety have been recklessly destabilized, we don't get to hear that full conversation on her city's management of the situation. Just last year alone, the city of Calgary had increased their spending by over $500 million. And I, you know, there's some new infrastructure projects, but we're not looking after the old infrastructure. We've seen nothing but increased spending, increased tax hikes, and like you said, increased spending on vanity projects. Instead of maybe, how will we fill the potholes? Uh, instead of maybe building more bike lanes? look at our infrastructure or our pipes instead of maybe that next new big shiny piece of art. So um, I think this is a wake up call. Calgarians are being financially drained by this administration and have received zero accountability from City Hall. And whether we'll be leaving this state of emergency anytime soon is still yet to be determined. This infrastructure disaster also translates to taxpayer funds in a big way. After two weeks, the mayor finally decided to propose a budget amendments to make up for her lack of preparedness. Does this take into reevaluation of uh, the mass rezoning plans and uh, in the infrastructure needs thereof? And why did it take a critical infrastructure collapse that risked Calgarian security and safety for this proposal to be brought? So one of the things that we'll be doing next week at our council meeting is talking about our budget. We'll be discussing what we wish to do for the mid-cycle review that comes up in uh, November. And we will also have a pretty fulsome conversation about future four-year budgets that we're developing. And it is my intention to ask the administration very clearly what they need in terms of budget to ensure that we've got proper technology and monitoring systems for all of our water infrastructure. Uh, we have been exercising monitoring and uh, modeling techniques in the past that I think could be strengthened with more technology. But again, we need to know for our expert teams how much money they need to do that. But the incident review has yet to provide clarity on the extent of our critical infrastructure issues and the financial needs therein. Is it too early to bring this proposal to City Hall considering the investigation has yet to resolve? The work that we do at Council continues uh, whether we have the situation on our hands like the water feeding break or whether it's regular course of business. Without the funds where they should have been, Mayor Gondek has taken to not only begging for federal and provincial resources, She's also looking into how the city can increase utility bills of Calgarians to finance her neglect. It is supposed to be a user pay system. And with the user pay, they're supposed to be doing the inspections and doing the, the pipeline repairs. So I don't know if that means that there's going to be a recalibration of what those rates will have to be to, to, to cover the cost of this repair um, and future repairs. Again, the focus is always is top heavy on administration and spending. So we've added thousands of employees, lots of vanity projects a ton of new infrastructure projects that maybe we just can't afford. There's only one taxpayer. They keep always saying we can get more money from the province or we can get more money from the feds. And then our local taxpayers, it's the same person. So it's just time where we just, you know, we got to slow down our spending and the bureaucracy, that's the beast that needs to be trimmed. How much is this going to cost, do you think? That's a number I want to hear. It's going to be in the millions. And we'll be knowing that number shortly because that was a question I asked the council as well. Mayor Gondek, do you have a moment? Just wondering about the vanity projects you've been working on. Do you feel like you've been distracted? Locals have been left to fend for themselves, and the mayor still can't provide on the answers demanded by all.
Your questions are great. Asking about why wasn't paving done and then finding out that it's because of the rain, those are questions that we are happy to take and answer. Mayor Gondek has also gone from being Calgary's least popular mayor to being even worse, dropping in popularity amidst our city's crisis. Locals have even started their own first ever municipal party called A Better Calgary, focused on common sense and fiscal responsibility. Earlier this year, Gondek also faced heavy scrutiny in the form of a petition called Recall Gondek, which acquired tens of thousands of signatures from locals who sought her resignation. Uh, I am looking at this new political party system with interest. I've been saying since the beginning, the last municipal election, there was a lot of uh, interference or not interference, or I could say just people that are involved in it. Third party advertisers played a huge part. And most people know how much the $1.7 million was contributed by six unions into a third party advertiser that it had a slate of candidates. They promoted, they uh, endorsed, and in some cases trained candidates to get, and most of these people that they helped are in city council today. Uh, where on the other side, which you would say would maybe the, that was the progressive side, and then the right of center, or the common sense side, I'll call it, there's three, four, five, six candidates all splitting the vote. So the idea of a municipal party, the intent I know was so that we could identify what your platform was. You couldn't just go knock on a door and say, I believe in uh, lower taxes and put a blue sign on there and then get elected and then do exactly the opposite or declare a climate change emergency. Nobody campaigned on that. So. That's the intent. Now, my hope is, is that we do not have a whole bunch of different parties uh, that will split the vote again. It's sort of a tale of, of two societies, I would say. Hmm. A tale of two societies. Is it your responsibility as mayor to unite? <laughs> I have had to skip showers to conserve water. I understand what you are all going through because I'm in this with all of you. The fact is we need a mayor who can bathe themselves without it being a risk to society. One who doesn't make things so bad that she has to beg an entire city to stop flushing their toilets for weeks. Do you think that will be back to normal by July 5th? That's that's what we're being told, but who knows? With the stampede, probably the pressure of the stampede. But it's already, you know, they said seven days and now it's going on, what, two or three weeks now, I think? What comes next is yet to be determined. We do know, however, that tens of thousands of people are beginning to arrive for the stampede on July 5th. It's incredibly important and as such, the show will go on, but it will go on in a very responsible manner. This show is the world's greatest outdoor expedition and a massive financial asset to the area, which has been put at risk by this city's administration. And it's not just hundreds of millions of dollars of annual investment that's been put at risk, but also the unique culture and work ethic Albertans have brought to the world. This province is known for its pride in its homegrown cowboy culture and the agriculture and industry innovations that built this province from the ground up. But with the mayor's handling of city resources, we lose both the ability to showcase our way of life to the world, but also the ability to maintain it. As been seen now over these last three weeks with Calgarians desperate, struggling to survive under her new restrictions and lack of governance oversight. Led by Mayor Gondek, the city has been so distracted with vanity projects and climate activism that it was unable not only to maintain the city's infrastructure or prevent this ongoing catastrophe, it was also unable to identify what actually matters to the health and well-being of Calgarians. The show must go on, but it should absolutely not be taking place at City Hall behind me. If you've had enough of the mayor's failed agendas and distractions, sign the petition at firegondek.com. Call for her resignation so that Calgarians can find a mayor capable of maintaining the basic needs of a city. Like your worship feels so high and mighty and um, I don't particularly care for it. And it really does have British colonial roots. We don't need to celebrate statues of water we need actual water to flow through our taps. After all, gay people and immigrants also depend on clean drinking water. For Rebel News, I'm Sydney Fizard. So until then, take some advice from Katrina and the waves. Go do some walking on sunshine. Don't forget to sign the petition at firegondek.com. I will do my best to personally deliver that petition to Mayor Jody Gondek, so long as she doesn't keep running away from me, that is. I want to continue thanking Calgarians. We thank you. There are too many people to thank. Thank you for everything you've done.